Hello everyone, welcome to our latest update program. India has achieved a milestone by launching its heaviest communication satellite on a launch vehicle that was 100% indigenously developed. So in this video, let us talk about this Bahubali launch vehicle and the CMS-03 satellite. So ISRO has achieved this milestone because it has launched the heaviest communication satellite, the CMS-03 communication satellite from the Indian soil on 2nd November and placed it into the orbit. Which orbit? The geosynchronous transfer orbit. From here, this will move to the geosynchronous Earth orbit. And this launch took place at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh at 5.26 pm. Now, this is a milestone for two basic reasons. The first one is that India placed, India basically launched its heaviest communication satellite and this satellite was launched using a launch vehicle which has been indigenously developed. Before this, because we did not have such high payload capacity launch vehicles, before this India used to rely on foreign companies, on foreign space stations to launch such heavy satellites. But now because India also has this facility, we can basically uh, launch our own satellites, we can also leverage this facility facility to other countries who do not have this high payload capacity at the moment just like us as we did not have it in the past. So we can also make money out of this and this is going to be a boost for the space economy of India as well. So now let's talk about the launch vehicle that has been used here. So the launch vehicle is LVM3M5. Launch vehicle Mark 3 Mission 5. Now the all the stages, like all the three stages of this launch vehicle, this has been made in India. So the first stage is the solid strap-on stage. This stage uses solid fuels because they are more reliable for the initial thrust, for the initial liftoff. So the solid strap-on stage has also been made in India. Then we have the liquid propellant stage. This makes use of liquid fuels like liquid hydrogen or kerosene and also two Vikas engines. Now it is easier to maneuver or adjust liquid fuels. So another stage like the second stage that we have after solid fuels is the liquid propellant stage where we make use of liquid fuels for better adjustment facilities. And then finally we have the cryogenic upper stage. This is the most important stage of a launch vehicle because here it is very energy dense because here we are making use of liquid propellants like liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and we are storing them at very low temperatures, temperatures as low as minus 150 degrees Celsius. So they are highly energy dense because we are able to store a lot of fuel into very compact spaces, very dense spaces. And that is why we are able to store more and more fuel. So this provides more thrust, more lift off to our satellites and also longer burning durations, which are basically required to place the satellite into the orbits. So all the three stages that are used in this launch vehicle, the solid stage, the liquid stage and the cryogenic stage have been developed in India only. And this is being nicknamed as Bahubali because of its high payload carrying capacity. This, way, uh, this satellite also, the CMS-03 satellite, this was also 4,410 kgs in weight. Now this 4410 kgs that was a huge payload capacity and this uh, launch vehicle basically was able to place this satellite into the GTO which is geosynchronous transfer orbit. From GTO it will move to GEO. So let's say this is the earth and here you will have this elliptical orbit will be GTO. 
Now any satellite does not automatically move to GEO, it first has to reach GTO and then a phenomena which is known as orbit raising happens where a satellite moves from GTO to GEO. This circular orbit here is GEO. At the highest, like at the farthest point from the Earth, GEO and GTO are going to overlap because the distance over here is somewhere around 36,000 kilometers. So any satellite will first have to reach GTO, then orbit raising is going to happen because the satellite is going to use its own propulsion systems and from GTO it is going to move to GEO. Right now our CMS-03 is here. Now CMS-03 in particular becomes important because this is a multi-band multi communication satellite. And this satellite is also going to be used heavily by the Indian Navy for its maritime operations, maritime communications over the Indian Ocean region. Now, multiband communication satellite basically means that a satellite is able to operate through multiple bands or multiple frequencies, which means that it becomes more and more versatile. Because every band or frequency has a different operation. We have different bands. We have L band, S band, X band, C band, K U band, K A band. So there are a lot of bands. Like L band that you see here is basically used for your mobile communication. C band is used for long range communication. K A band, K U band, you have high speed internet or long range satellite TV communication. All these different bands and frequencies are used for different functions. And when a satellite is able to operate through multiple frequencies or multiple bands, it makes it more and more versatile. So if there's some uh, weather issues that are happening at one particular frequency level, the satellite can move to a different level. So it can serve a lot of functions here. It can serve military function, civilian function, satellite functions, communication functions, all these things can happen. And this particular satellite is going to be a communication satellite which has been placed in the geosynchronous which is going to be placed in the geosynchronous earth orbit which means that it will be able to provide a constant coverage of a specific area for a very long duration a constant coverage basically of that specific area so this is going to be heavily used by our indian navy so it is going to have both civilian uses and military uses. Civilian uses it can also be used for satellite communications and Navy is also going to use for its own maritime communication across the Indian Ocean region. That is why this becomes very important for India. Firstly because this is the heaviest communication satellite and secondly because it has been be launched by a vehicle that has been made in India only and with this we can also provide a boost to our space sector. So that was all for today's session. I hope you understood everything that we discussed here. Now let us practice a question for prelims. With reference to the recent Bahubali rocket launch, consider the following statements. One, the Bahubali rocket, also known as GSLV M3, MK3, is designed to carry heavy payloads and this is capable of launching India's heaviest satellite into orbit. Two, the CMS-03 satellite launched by Bahubali rocket is primarily used for military communication, especially by Indian Navy. Three, the cryogenic stage of the rocket provides the final push to place satellites into the geosynchronous orbit. And four, the launch of the Bahubali rocket is a part of India's strategy to enhance its space capabilities and compete in the global satellite launch market. Which of the above statements is or are correct? One and two only, two only. 1, 2 and 3, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Please provide your answers in the comment section and we will meet in a new video. Thank you for watching. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.